in this current coronavirus pandemic, one of the key issues for healthcare workers and governments is the fact that it's hard to isolate this disease. Uh, as our president noted Sunday night, this disease has cut across socioeconomic lines, across racial lines, cultural lines, uh, and it's affected everybody. Not, not everybody in the same way, but it's had an effect on everybody. Isn't it interesting how trials and how suffering can remove these artificial, these superficial distinctions that we've created and place us all in a, in a position where we're being affected by those things? I think this is what James is addressing a bit in James 1, 9 through 11. And remember, he's talking about how a faith that, save present, faith that saves presents itself in the midst of trials. Here he talks about the poor, and by that he means materially poor, financially poor, and the wealthy. In verse 9, he, he tells the poor person to boast in their exaltation, that they shouldn't take their identity in their suffering. They, they shouldn't boast about, oh, I'm like Christ in that I'm poor, but they should boast in their position in Christ, that they are exalted in Christ, uh, that they are a child of God through Christ. And then James turns to the wealthy person. And it's interesting that in the original language, the poor person gets about 10 words and the wealthy person gets about 44 words. Uh, and just in case you're in doubt, if you're watching this devotion, uh, you probably fall under the wealthy category. Now, we may not be Oppenheimer wealthy, uh, but compared to the majority of the world and compared to the majority of people throughout history, we would definitely be considered wealthy. And here he, he tells the wealthy person to, to boast in their humiliation. His challenge here is, is that they need to live out through their suffering. I think he's kind of referencing back to verses two through four and, and telling that the wealthy person needs to endure his suffering. Now, why, why is this necessary for the wealthy person to endure his suffering? Well, I, I think we can find a bit of that answer in a couple other verses. In Proverbs 11, 28, the Proverbs uh, the writer says, he who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like the green leaf. And Paul, in 1 Timothy 6, 17, exhorts Timothy to tell his church members, as for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, not to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. In both of those verses, uh, the authors use the word uh, trust, and both are exalting the rich person not to trust in their riches, not to trust in their wealth. Now, why should we not trust in our wealth? Well, James makes that argument, and he says that it, it's foolish. Uh, in verses 9 through 11, he talks about the flowers going to fade, that, that not only are their lives going to fade away, their wealth is going to fade away. And it's foolish to place our trust in that. I think we've seen that in this coronavirus pandemic. How many businesses that were decades old have, have closed and have disappeared in a matter of months? Wealth is fleeting, and we shouldn't trust it. Another reason we shouldn't trust it is a bit about of our devotion yesterday. Um, we, as wealthy people, often trust in our finances to deliver us, to take us through this J-curve, to take us from this suffering death, and we use our wealth to resurrect and exalt ourselves. We don't allow Christ, we don't allow God to do his job to resurrect and exalt us in this life. And we're not talking just our ultimate spiritual destination, but we're talking about the, the constant uh, pattern of life of suffering, death, resurrection, exaltation that takes place on a smaller scale. And too often, we as wealthy people trust our finances, trust our bank account, trust our investments to deliver us. And, and Scripture says that's foolish because they fall apart. They're not permanent. They can't deliver us to the resurrection that we need. I think another warning comes from Jesus in Matthew 6. We know Jesus in Matthew 6 ties together the fact that where our heart is, that's where our treasure is, and, and vice versa, that our heart and our treasures are tied together. James is exalting us to, to take our treasure and our identity in Christ, that that's what we should treasure. You know, a couple verses after Jesus gives that exhortation about your heart and treasure, he says that you cannot serve two masters. Man can't serve God and money. I think this is right in line with James when James says that we can't be friends of the world, that to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. 
The worldly way says, get enough money and you can be secure. You can be secure in your life. You can be secure in your retirement. It's all about your finances. They're going to solve all your problems. Well, that's a direct contradiction to what God calls us to do. He calls us to take our identity in him, to trust him, to lean on him, to allow him to be the one to resurrect us. So in this coming week and, and during this day, I pray that, that we would ask ourselves our question, well, what do I really trust? Where have I placed my trust? Am, am I trusting my wealth? Am I trusting my abilities? Or do I truly trust God to bring about resurrection in whatever suffering, in whatever situation that he is walking me through at this point in my life.